Shawn Mendes talks about performing at Justin and Haley's wedding. And Beyonce's ex-drummer accuses her of using witchcraft. And Kim Kardashian is embarrassed of Kanye West. Uh, all that and more on today's rundown. Well, Shane Dawson yesterday dropped part three of his docuseries about Jake Paul, and in it, Logan Paul drops a major bombshell. Yeah, but first, you guys, my girl Taylor Swift is performing at the AMAs, and I couldn't be more excited. Taylor Swift just made an announcement that she would be performing at the AMAs with a pre-recorded video that aired on Good Morning America, and she had none other than her adorable little fur baby Meredith by her side. While Taylor seemed super excited to kick off the award show, Meredith seemed unfazed by the whole thing. It's Taylor, I just wanted to say, um, I'm gonna be opening up the American Music Awards with a performance, so I wanted to, don't be too excited about it, my God. On top of that exciting announcement, Taylor also made sure to let her fans know what song she'll be performing that night. In an Instagram post for those who may have missed the initial announcement on GMA, Taylor posted a video to her own page and captioned it with, quote, I'm opening up the American Music Awards with a performance of I Did Something Bad. Meredith is not excited, but I am. I am also very excited. First of all, I love this song. She, uh, this is actually the opening song to her Reputation Tour, which is so good. So I'm so excited that they're gonna kick off the AMAs with this song. I'm not. <gasps> What? I know. I mean, what? you're a total Swifty and you like love everything Taylor does, let's be fair. Let's be honest. I mean, I do too for the most part, but I Did Something Bad is a good song, but I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like Delicate might have been like better or um, Getaway Car. Like, Aaron, we were at this concert together. Do you not remember? I Did Something Bad. I it was definitely don't remember. <laughs> That's what you're asking me. But. I mean, I remember, I, I put it on Instagram, so I have those memories, but I'm just saying, like, I just think that they're better songs, you know? I'm very happy about this, but I don't. I mean, I'm not bad. I'm just, like, not as, like, excited as you are. You wish it was a different one. Yeah, exactly. But I'm excited to see Taylor back on stage performing again. Well, Shawn Mendes is available, Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin, to perform at your wedding, and he, like, kind of wants to do it for real. By now, we are all very much aware that Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin got legally hitched at a New York City courthouse last month. However, that does not mean that these two are not planning a huge bash to celebrate this. And now we have our own thoughts on who should perform at their reception. So while speaking with Access Hollywood at the Global Citizen Festival over the weekend, Shawn Mendes revealed that while he didn't receive an invite to the wedding just yet, he would be more than willing to perform. Are you gonna sing at the wedding? Am I gonna sing at the wedding? Um, I, I, of course I would sing. I am not invited yet, but I'm sure something will happen soon. What's so interesting to me about this is, I remember maybe a year or two ago, someone asked Justin Bieber about Shawn Mendes. And Justin Bieber was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Which he probably did, but he was just oh, like. Oh, he so did. He was like, I don't know, I don't know. It's like de <laughs> like a Mariah Carey moment. Like, yeah. I don't know her. Uh, I don't know her. Uh, so that's really interesting to me. I wonder if these two have ever actually had a conversation. Are no. they friends? Do they talk? Because if not, this seems a little like weird. This is him trying to play it cool. This is him like, oh yeah, I perform there. He's he wouldn't. Sean Mendes is not going to perform at Haley Baldwin and Justin Bieber's wedding. Yeah, I agree. first of all, Justin Bieber would not have that. I don't care if it, their relationship was real or a publicity son. Justin Bieber's like, uh uh, <laughs> not <laughs> no gonna way. Just like if Selena would perform at their wedding, LOL. it's not going to happen. <laughs> but I um, admire him for being so sweet about it. Uh, because I'm sure he gets these questions all the time now that Haley and Justin are engaged. So I think he's just being cool. He's being chill. He's being Sean. And that's that. <laughs> he's being Sean. Being Sean. <laughs> Whatever that means. So, you guys, uh, possibly the most ridiculous story I think we've ever talked about on the show, Beyonce's ex-drummer recently spoke out about Beyonce casting spells on her and her cat. About a week ago, Beyonce's former drummer, Kimberly Thompson, opened up to the Daily Mail about her time working with Beyonce, and uh, to say it wasn't a positive experience would be an understatement. Kimberly was a part of Beyonce's all-girl band for seven years and not only accused Beyonce of bullying her, but straight up said she used witchcraft on her. Yes, you heard that correctly. 
Kimberly even claims that Beyonce has been, quote, basically doing anything and everything to damage any type of happiness that I could have. Kimberly also alleged that this has been going on for quite some time. Right away, you know, you need to do something because otherwise you're going to be in really, really, really huge trouble. She then went on to reveal that she attempted to file a restraining order after leaving Beyonce's fans, saying, quote, she's not been able to let me go, she's not been able to let me progress into a mature woman and work with other people. Kimberly also wanted to make it clear that she did not file this restraining order for attention, but instead as an attempt to cut the cord with Beyonce. Kimberly also claimed that Beyonce has paid people to fire her, has been stealing her ideas, and even accused Beyonce of jumping into other people's bodies to watch her while she's being intimate. Kimberly added, quote, this has been going on for a very long time, so it has taken God's strength to really make me get up and stand up for myself, starting with the restraining order. She went on to say that she doesn't want anything to do with Beyonce whatsoever and added, quote, I've been absolutely brutally abused by her trying to control everything I'm doing. Kimberly even went as far as to say that Beyonce cast a spell on her cat and found this out after going to a psychic. They were like, the cat has a spell on it. And I said, well, what about this person, this person, you know, that we are discussing at this time? They're like, yes, this person put the spell on a cat and uh, you need to get rid of it. Despite the claims that Kimberly made, the temporary restraining order has been denied and Beyonce has yet to comment on these allegations. Um, what? 2018 has been the most <laughs> shocking year of all, so nothing really surprises me at this point. But, I mean, there's some claims in here that I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing somebody could do. Um, my That's only everything. response, <laughs> right, right, jumping into someone's body. <laughs> um, my only response to Kimberly, I don't want to shame her because maybe she is, like maybe something happened to her that we don't know about, um, that she's got some sort of, you know, um, argument towards, but, where are the receipts? Like yeah. I need, I need some real proof of someone bullying you or, you know, someone saying, oh yeah, Beyonce told me to destroy this girl. For sure. And you know what? Beyonce has been so busy with her own life. Like I get it, Beyonce's queen, but you can't be Beyonce by spending time tearing other people apart and like ruining their lives. Let's say it's real. Let's say this whole witchcraft angle is even a true thing. You think Beyonce to ruin someone else's life while she's trying to like build this empire and be Beyonce, I just, it's not humanly possible. It's not. I'd be impressed if Beyonce made time for all of this. Casting spells on not only people uh, that she dates, but her cat. I Beyonce mean, casts a spell on her cat. Uh, here's the thing. I want to give Kimberly the benefit of the cat. Kind of, not really. I want to meet this cat. What is wrong? How did Beyonce cast a spell on this cat? Does this cat act that weird? She said it, it acted bipolar. But like, has she ever met a cat? Yeah, I'm like, girl, she <laughs> says she claims she's had cats growing up. I'm like, I don't think so. I think those were dogs. The fact that this is a story, <laughs> I can't. This is too much. It's too much. It is. It really is. Well, Kim Kardashian is apparently really upset at Kanye's SNL Trump rant. So multiple sources have come out to reveal that Kim Kardashian is embarrassed by Kanye's antics and she feels he is embarrassing the entire family. So the source went on to say they definitely have their issues, but Kim always defends Kanye publicly and tries to be supportive. She believes Kanye is entitled to his opinion and can express it freely. She may not always agree with him, but she still feels he's allowed to believe what he wants. So it was a speech that he gave when the cameras were not rolling, captured by Chris Rock, where he was wearing the infamous um, MAGA hat and talking talking about how we should follow our hearts and not our minds, that apparently left Kim embarrassed. Although Kanye has aligned himself with President Donald Trump in the past, and Kim has also met with him at the White House, she doesn't necessarily agree with all of Trump's policies. Kim has also tweeted in the past that she doesn't have to share her husband's political opinions. Kim has since posted this photo to her Instagram saying, we got love, so perhaps this was her way of debunking the rumors. So Kenan Thompson has come forward to really talk about his side of the story of what happened on SNL. He actually went on to say that he and others at SNL were kind of held hostage uh, backstage. He said, I did my part in the monologue and I got to watch the circus unfold. He voiced his opinion very loudly for a long time. We're all entitled to our opinion. I don't know if that's the moment necessarily to hold people hostage like that. So apparently this went on and so it was time for people to leave and then he wouldn't just stop. So I think that's what he meant by being held hostage. Um, this is so interesting to me because Kim Kardashian's relationship with Kanye West has always seemed 
like super strong when we yeah. see them together. And because Kanye's behavior is so bizarre, I always wonder what goes on behind the scenes and you know, if this is good for a relationship, for two people to be so divided if Kim doesn't believe the things that Kanye believes. Yeah, I I do love that she stands by him no matter what, considering she is his wife, I yeah. get it. You have to be supportive of, of your significant other, but his behavior, especially recently, has been so bizarre. I mean, we know he made those claims about like wanting to stay in Chicago once he moves there, even though we know Kim will obviously still be shooting Keeping Up, so will that divide them? And then this whole thing on SNL was just so weird. So I really, I don't know what's going on with Kanye. Wish him and Kim the best. I fully believe that Kim was definitely telling people that she was super embarrassed, but publicly, she's gonna act like everything's fine because that, that's just what you do. You don't bring your family drama to the public unless it's on Keeping Up With The Kardashians and you are making a lot of money from it. Exactly. <laughs> Shane Dawson just dropped his third part of his Jake Paul series and this video was not only shocking because what we learned about Jake's family, but because in the video, Logan Paul made a super shocking confession. In parts one and two of Shane Dawson's The Mind of Jake Paul series, Shane gave a broad overview of Jake's past and sat down with a psychologist to talk about sociopathic behavior. Now, he's diving deep into Jake's family, vlog mom, vlog dad, and of course, Logan. Shane spent hours combing through all of the fam's videos, and what he found was uh, interesting to say the least. Jake's mom was using an eggplant emoji on a video about Logan. His dad was making out with a young girl while she's blindfolded. His mom throwing shade at his dad. It was a lot. But it seemed like Jake's own video, a Draw My Life clip from 2016, is what provided the most insight into the Paul family dynamic. So in the video, Jake talked about his childhood and what it was like growing up for him. He explained that his dad was in the military, so he fostered a very competitive spirit between him and Logan, as we see that now. He would even record the brothers' football games so that they could watch them back and he could tell them what they needed to improve on. Jake also talked about his parents' divorce, which is actually what Shane thinks might explain his bad behavior as a kid. He said he was going through a hard time, which led to him getting 14 behavioral strikes. And then he decided, if football's boring, and now I want to wrestle. Like, that's a kid with a f ton of anger issues. But perhaps the most shocking revelation came from Logan himself. So after Shane's video on sociopaths dropped, Logan, I guess, went on to say he wanted to put out a response video, so Shane decided to reach out to him, and you guys, what happened next was a shock to us all. I'm on the sociopathic spectrum. I wouldn't say I'm a sociopath, but I would absolutely say I have sociopathic tendencies. And at the beginning of the year, I was at a place in my life where they got the best of me and they consumed me, which is when it gets dangerous. So Logan admitted to Shane that he actually does have, quote, sociopathic tendencies. I was so shocked that Logan admitted this. He also went on to say that Jake is much more empathetic than he is, and that's actually something he's envious of. I, I, I don't know what to say, but it explains a lot. I know Shane was kind of, uh, or, or Logan was talking about a darker time in his life, and I think it was regarding the Suicide Forest video. So it just, it, it feels like this revelation, I guess we've all had, not Logan, Logan knew about it, explains a lot. Yeah. I don't know, I watched this video and of course I love Shane and I think what he's doing is awesome. And maybe most people don't know this, but I was watching it and I was like, yeah, I, I knew all of this. Maybe it's because we are in this world so often and yeah. we do report on news about the Paul dad and the mom and all of them. So I think maybe we know more than most people. Which, so I was watching and I was like, yeah, of course, like all this is so crazy. And it's like something that you can't script. Do you know what I'm no, saying? Like yeah. if you wrote a movie about this, it wouldn't get bought because people would be like, I don't think this is like real. Like nobody's gonna believe that this is real. Yeah, the um, entire Paul family. It's just, just so, so bizarre. But I am so glad that Shane's uncovering it for the masses to see because I think for a long time, people just thought like people were being harsh, especially like the Jake Paulers or the fans. They thought people were just being hard on them. But I think when you start to see things in a more constructive, like adult way, it really starts to show you that there's a lot more to this story. 
All right, you guys, before we go, we really want to hear from you guys. So do you think that Beyonce is really casting spells on her ex-drummer and her ex-drummer's cat? Let us know down in the comments below. And if she is casting spells, have her call me because I got some people that I need to <laughs> like go after. I'm just joking. Um, also, do you think that Justin Bieber would actually ask Shawn Mendes to perform at his wedding with Hailey? Or do you think that will never happen? Hypothesize. I was looking for the word. Hypothesize. <laughs> Hypothesize. In the comments, like this video, subscribe to our channel, you guys, and we'll be back here tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. And then click right over here to find out why the internet was pissed at Pete Davidson after a joke he made about Ariana Grande's birth control. And I wasn't kidding earlier when I was like, subscribe to our channel. Like, I actually mean it. So go click the button. I don't mean to be aggressive, Just but you like, know. Click it. You're here. You might as well. Or Beyonce will cast a spell on you. <gasps>